I'm Good Our Day Sir, folks, and today we're not starting with a Chevrolet, we're starting with a Kia. And what year is this thing? She's a 09. It's a doll, huh? Big 3.3 or 3.8 or something in it. And this one is sent to us from another shop with a big old list here. Uh, evidently, they're having some problems with the engine light on. The 09 Sedona with a 3.8. Has lots of codes in it, a P0011, a 12, a 16, a 26. So those are all cam timing codes. 172 for a rich, a 300 for misfire. They sent me a whole list of all their scans of just page after page after page of just codes it has. We've got on here, lean on both banks. I mean, just tons of stuff. So anyhow, we're not gonna look too much into that. Uh, all we know is that the money light is on starts and runs it's got 130k on it and they want the engine light fixed so we're gonna pull it inside here we'll get our door opening and we'll see what codes are in it currently hopefully I mean it sounds like they've been clearing them and then the codes just uh, come right back so we'll see what portion of the drive cycles run and what codes are in it currently and see if we can't fix them get out of there we're just gonna jump right into just generic OBD2 data because we want to see what portion of the drive cycle is done and uh, you know what codes are in it compared to you know what they left me on their list here so I imagine the drive cycle is not done and it's not so we've got three monitors that are incomplete and three codes that are in the vehicle currently so let's just see what they are it's always a good idea to check uh, you know to see if uh, drive cycle is done here so we've got a 16 and a 12 so that's what we're concerned with the random misfire is likely being caused by these problems yeah, it's got old permanent codes for running lean post catalyst fuel trim too lean but these are the ones we're going to look at the P0012 and 16 cam correlation over retarded that doesn't sound too good correlation bank one sensor one so uh, it doesn't sound too good usually if there's you know mechanical failure you know stretch in a chain we use that term loosely usually the timing falls behind you know becomes over retarded uh, they did leave me a list of parts they replaced and that includes but not limited to new plugs new coils in the back new crank sensor new intake and exhaust VVT solenoids uh, from Kia so those are the parts they've changed Pops into some OEM data. Oh, there we go. I was gonna say, we're gonna look for some, uh, hopefully that it had some camshaft position PIDs so we can see actual versus desire. And this is exactly what we have. So it appears that probably the intake cam, I didn't see one for exhaust. We're gonna keep going. Maybe the intake cam is the only one that has variable valve timing. So I'm just gonna kind of scan through here and it appears that, that it is. So let's uh, get a live data PID here. Um, engine RPM is always a good one to pick. And let's go, oops, hit the wipers here. Let me see if we can give it the reach around to start it up. Okay. Well, <laughs> here's your problem, lady. Uh, so this is what, I don't know why our data pit's not live here. Oh, okay, there it is, just for a little behind. Um, intake cam, actual position bank one is behind 25 degrees. Um, I don't know how accurate the data pits are, but this is what the PCM seeing and that's the code that it has in it, right? Let's, uh, uh, let's see advanced system performance timing over retarded. So the P0012 Bank one is falling behind and that's what it's seeing. So I think this is probably going to be a pretty uh, Cut and dry case. I'm assuming I think the best thing for us to do now is to Get out of here Pop the hood and have a look at the stuff under here. Say hello to the lovely Mrs. O. What's up, Mrs. O? Pretty much. What's up? Staining some wood, huh? Yeah. Staining some paint sticks. Yeah. Whoa! There she is. Uh, let's find out which one is. Oh, this is all bolted on. Find out where bank one is. Um, you know, things that could be going on here are as uh, bad 
you know, VVT actuators. So the solenoid that they said they replaced, said they did both of them. So I'm assuming there's only two. Or we could literally have <clears throat> the cam timing that's off, which is what I suspect, you know, for whatever reason. So let me get this off, start to identify some components here. All right, I see both uh, VVT actuators are new. So they sit down here in the end of the head. Uh, this rear bank must be bank one. So typically looking at a V configuration engine, whichever one has the cylinder that is further ahead of the other is typically bank one. I think that's a sometimes, but not always case, but 90% of the time type thing. Uh, so I'm gonna assume this is bank one. We'll look it up for sure. Uh, it's a chain drive engine. <clears throat> uh, so there's that. You know, we don't have any circuit codes for the VVT solenoid. Looks like a real piss pot to get to. But they are both new as indicated. And then the cam sensor, I don't know where that lives. Oh, okay, so maybe this is it. So there's one up here on top on the intake cam on bank two. And then, yep, the one back here is brand new. And they did say that was a Kia part, so. I'm thinking just from scan tool data, we could kind of confirm this one. I mean, we can hook the hook the scan tool to it or hook the uh, scope to it, get the cam crank waveform, compare it to a known good, but I assume we're gonna see it that 25 degrees off or at least uh, falling behind. Uh, hmm. All right, well, let's kind of keep going here, but I think we're kind of wasting our time at this point. I think ultimately what's going to have to happen is the cover is going to have to come off this engine. So I went online, folks, uh, to a waveform exchange program, a uh, group that I belong to on the Facebook, and somebody had a uh, 2008 Sedona 3.8 cam crank waveform. Now, Hyundai Kia is usually pretty good about putting this stuff in service data, which they did, but it's a pretty crappy picture and it's really hard to tell. Um, usually they show, you know, scope captures, but I think we can learn a lot from this. So I'm just going to zoom in on a section here. So we have, uh, let me just turn off channel C here because we don't really need that. And I'll read this fellow's notes to you. So we can see our, our two cams here. Uh, channel A has got labeled as bank two, so it's going to be the front cam. Uh, channel B is the rear cam, but I guess most importantly, we can see the two uh, cam patterns overlay on themselves. And then you, we can see it's a, it's a 58 tooth crank signal minus two teeth. Oops, let me redo this here. And we can see how it lines up in reference to the uh, open tooth here on the, on the crank signal. Um, so uh, down here is our, our open tooth on the crank signal. We can kind of see how that lines up with this portion of the cam. So uh, I think probably the easiest thing, I, we can do a cam crank correlation on this. We can use our Pico scope here and get the same waveform that this fella obtained uh, that shared. I'm certain that we're gonna see that the rear bank is off just like scan data shows. Uh, it's a, a little bit of a waste of time. You know, the solenoids, are new, they have the same problem. So I doubt that we have a stuck solenoid on the same bank. Um, what we can do is unplug that rear solenoid just to make sure that electronically it's not turned on and you know allowing oil control or oil pressure to go to uh, uh, you know the cam gear and, and retard it. Now I don't know and I couldn't find in service data is if we apply power to the solenoid does it advance or retard the camshaft? That I'm not sure it's, you know, variable, but it doesn't tell me to what degree. Um, that's why they call it a CVVT instead of a, just a VVT. You know, it's a pulse width modulator duty signal going to the solenoid to, I don't wanna say infinitely change it, but to, to change the cam timing within a given range. <clears throat> I would be uh, hesitant to apply power to that with it running because if we are already at 25 degrees behind and all of a sudden we move it behind more and the pistons touch the valves. Well, now we've got a big problem. So we're not gonna do that. Uh, the scan tool will not actuate the solenoids with a code that's in it, um, but it's all making sense. You know, with the lean codes, uh, a long, long time ago, Ivan and I did a video on a uh, Hyundai 
where the camshaft bearing went bad and actually the cam twisted. Uh, so it threw the timing off and it was making one bank uh, run lean and one bank run rich because it screws up the volumetric efficiency of the engine. So the mass airflow was goofed up because of the amount of air going in and what the bank that the timing was on was running lean and the bank the timing was off was running rich. And it's just because of, of how it works. So um, I'll find out where these, uh, where these wires go. We'll at least get tapped into it and uh, you know, just kind of verify that I can call the shop and tell them, hey, you know, cover's gotta come off. It's either, you know, in the cam gear, in the trigger wheel assembly, or in the actual physical, uh, you know, mechanical timing of the engine. But without tearing the cover off, this is the best we can do. I'm gonna reach down here with a pick and we're gonna unplug this solenoid. We'd hate to be uh, wrong because it's, you know, uh, has a power and a ground supply to it full time. If that was the case, I would assume it would set a circuit code, but let's not assume. Let's grab the scan tool, start it up and see, make sure that bank is still off. Okay. Back in the engine. We should have another, I assume we're gonna have a circuit code for that solenoid now, but we're just gonna pop into live data and we'll get back down to that intake cam. Well, this is interesting. Shows it at zero now. Well, let me plug that sucker back in. I did not expect to see that. Let's see if we can't get it plugged back in here. It's kind of a pisser to get to. I plugged it in and it's still at zero. Let me uh, re- Oh, nope, there it goes. So that's interesting. Minus 25. Let me, let me take and unplug it here. So I just unplugged it. Maybe it just took it a while to read. Now it's at zero, but see, I don't know. I don't know if once it sets a code, it quits reading that data. You know, I, I'm not real sure. Um, sometimes car do some, cars will do some funky things. So yeah, we have our intake. Well, I know the glare's there, but uh, P0076, so a new code. So I can see that circuit, because it sets a circuit low code unplugged, which is to be expected. So this is kind of interesting. For the heck of it, I unplugged bank two. And you know, this is running within like a, you know, a half a degree where it wants to be. And when I unplug it, everything just goes to zero in it. And then when I plug it in, it starts, you know, kind of reading live again. I would assume if we plug this in and this cam timing actually changed 25 degrees retarded, we would have heard a change in the engine. I'm more assuming that once it sets a circuit code, it's quit, it quits looking at actual live data. Uh, the only way to prove that is to actually watch the cam signal on a scope. Uh, because I just can't fathom that when we plug this in, it changes 25 degrees and we don't hear a bit of a change in the engine. I'm gonna plug it back in again, we're gonna listen. Ready? nothing's happening now but oh there it goes so it just went to negative you know 25 degrees when we first plugged it in you know heard just like a little hiccup but if you're changing cam timing 25 degrees this thing's really gonna I would assume it's gonna sound a little different we hear something I don't know let's uh let's get on this cam and crank signal pulled the cover off our connector here found the pins uh, just looking at a wiring diagram here. So I'm tapped into the uh, crank sensor high and then both cam signals. And I've got them up here on our scope and I've got them labeled, you know, crank sensor high, bank one, bank two, cam, testing at the PCM. So now we'll go in here and start this thing up. We'll capture some data. Got it moved around so you can see it a little better. 
let this run for a second. Just gonna pause that there and shut it off. So I've zoomed in on a section here for us that has uh, 720 degrees on the screen. So here's a, you know, a crank signal, there's 360, and here is 720. Our green trace is bank one, so that's the rear cam. That's the one that we suspect is falling behind, and we can see it is because you can see this cam pattern is shifted to the right. And easiest thing on a scope member is right retarded. So any any pattern that is you know to the right from your trigger is is falling behind. You know this this signal got written before that one. You know the way the data comes in. Um, so we can clearly see that that signal is is behind here we can throw up a phase ruler on here we'll bring it from here now let's see oops get this thing to work here we'll bring this across we'll just set up 720 degrees uh, on the screen here and then we can grab another ruler we can just see the difference between these cams we can just mark this spot here and then we can mark this spot here and see how much behind it is and we can see here from cam to cam they're about 14 degrees difference or 15 degrees difference between you know front cam and rear cam and um you guys remember that last uh waveform we looked at the known good they were they were right on top of each other so let me let this load up and we'll have a look at that one here's our known good waveform and we'll just zoom right in on these cams no sense in really looking at them too close. Easiest thing to do is overlap them. I mean, it's, you know, within, you know, a degree or two, uh, certainly not 15 degrees off, but you can see how they overlap. Okay. And then we'll go look at our waveform that we have stored and get rid of all these uh, phase rulers and all that business. We'll take do the same thing, go to overlap it, and we can clearly see the green traces is falling behind. All right, now we just captured this with everything plugged in. And what we were kind of suspect of, get rid of our channel labels down here, was when we unplugged our data on scan tool changed. So what we want to know is we're going to unplug that solenoid and we're going to capture the same waveform we just did and see where it is, uh, despite what uh, scan data was saying. I suspect that once we set a circuit code, scan data quits reading that data pit. That would be my guess. Uh, not uncommon. So there's that one plugged. We'll set uh, this down here. We'll get our scope running again here. Oops, oh, I tripped over the cord, so that one unplugged, so I just gotta reset the value on it. Okay, let's go ahead and start it up, capture the data again, and have a look and see if that remains, you know, that 15 degrees from cam to cam uh, being different. So we'll just start it up. Sit here and run for a second. We'll hit the space bar, we'll pause it, we'll shut this car back off. And then we'll have a look and see. I don't suspect we're gonna see any change personally. Uh, because I don't suspect that there's any any circuit problems. Let's see here, we're just gonna take and zoom in on a section here. And then we'll do exactly what we did before. We'll just overlay and have a, just a, kind of a, a quick look here. And we can see that the green trace is still, is still falling behind. Um, what we could do is look at our known good, see where our bank two cam, you know, falls in reference to the crank mark just to, just to make sure. But it's pretty obvious to me looking at this with the solenoid plugged in, with the solenoid unplugged, that that bank is falling behind in timing. Um, you know, like I say, the only thing we can do now, or the other shop can do, is pull a cover and have a look. Does it have a broken guide? Is the cam phaser itself stuck? You know, on the end of the uh, cam gear, has the trigger wheel moved? You know, those, those are questions you can't answer until, you know, you're in there. Uh, somebody would argue with that and say, well, you can do an in-cylinder pressure transducer test and see if the mechanical timing has actually moved or if the trigger wheel has moved. However, doing an in-cylinder test when all your coils are under the intake is almost impossible. I'm not smart enough to read uh, intake pulses to be able to tell you, you know, what color underwear you're wearing. There are some guys that can, 
at this point, I would say the cover has to come off. The mechanical timing is off on this engine. So hopefully this makes sense to you guys. You know, going at it with the scope is just taking it that one little extra step so we can actually physically see like, yes, the cam on bank one is falling behind like the code says and like scan data showed. And then we're also able to, you know, unplug that solenoid, which was a little indecisive just looking at scan data. But like I say, oftentimes looking in scan data, when you unplug a component, you know, something like this, you know, we unplug that solenoid and all of a sudden it looks like it's fixed, uh, if you will. You know, our cam timing goes from, you know, minus 25 degrees on the scan tool to zero. And you're like, oh, well, it's got to be something in that solenoid. I unplugged it. Now it's, you know, miraculously fixed. But we can see that it appears that data PID just went dead. And I assume it's because of the circuit code that's set. And if we looked in code set criteria, sometimes you'll find that information, sometimes you won't. But we could clearly see solenoid plugged in, solenoid unplugged, nothing actually physically changed uh, with the camshaft. It still stayed broken. It still was falling behind. You know, like I say, difference of 15 degrees from cam to cam. Uh, so that's, that's about it. I mean, there's nothing more you could do. Like I say, you could really beat this thing to death and do in cylinder tests, and intake pulse testing, or you could just pull the cover off and it's going to be broke. Um, there's going to be that very rare instance where, you know, the cam trigger has moved on the cam or something, you know, super, super weird like that. Uh, but I doubt we got anything weird going on. So I'm just going to call the other shop. They'll take it back. And, you know, I don't know if they'll, you know, put a motor in it or if they'll pull the cover and see what happened, you know. It's pretty quiet. You don't hear chain noise on that side of the engine. So that's, you know, kind of bizarre. But like I say in the beginning, typically when there is something wrong mechanically, the cam always falls behind, you know, because it's a clockwise rotation. You know, if a tooth's gonna skip or if there's a guide missing, you know, that cam is always, always falling behind. As chains wear, the pins wear in the chains, the cam falls behind. If you get a car in that has an over advanced camshaft, usually that's caused by these. Somebody's been in there meddling with things they ought not be meddling in and physically move the cam ahead. Or there's a problem with the phaser if the phaser has the ability to advance the camshaft, you know, there could be issues there. So uh, that's it. Nothing more to do. We've gone further than we should. So why don't you guys go farther than you should in that comment section? Questions, comments, the entity, the Facebook, you know where to find us. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.